This entitled mum refuses to take responsibility for feeding her children, and instead blames a pizza place. She'll come up with the craziest excuses for justifying her reckless behavior. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. I worked in a daycare for five years. I managed one for four out of the five. I was 18 years old when I first got into management role. I was bright eyed and chipper and ready to change the world one aftercare program at a time. Outcast. Me, the naive daycare manager. EM, entitled mother. K, the child who I don't blame due to the mother. ED, entitled dad. P, the panic attack I had after the situation occurred. So in my time during the daycare, there was this little boy. I say little, but he was 11. That constantly didn't listen. I'm talking full-fledged would do things he knew he shouldn't. Didn't matter how many times I talked to him, didn't matter what I did, nothing ever worked. I tried working with his mom multiple times. It got to the point where my boss was just like, all right, they can't come back for the rest of the week. And then he'd push me in the room with them to drop the bomb. The mom and dad always had excuses for him. So in this particular issue, the kid ran away from his group, which I mean, isn't that bad. The kicker is he hid in a secluded part of our building and played Angry Birds on his phone until I finally found him because he screamed. When asked why he left the area he was supposed to be in, he told me, I just didn't feel like listening. I don't have to. My parents told me they don't like you, so I don't like you either. I wasn't surprised, and I was fine with this comment. I was not the biggest fan of them either. I of course had communication with my boss the whole time during this situation and he had communication with the parents on what was going on. She told them we would have the consequence and paperwork ready when they came to pick up the kids. This is where the fun begins. Please keep in mind this isn't word for word, but you get it to be honest. Entitled mom storms into the room. I know where this is going. He isn't suspended. This is clearly you guys fault. Actually, he indefinitely is for the next three days. His sister is welcome to come back during these three days, but your son is unfortunately not able to join us. I try to go into why and explain the safety issue and how we need him to understand that he has to stay with the group, but she was not having it. She screamed and at one point slammed her hand on the table. The son at one point looks at me and says, I told you she didn't like you. And the mum said, that's true, this is why. After blaming the group teacher for him running away, even after telling her what she did, she storms out of the building with her kids and I think the situation is over. <laughs> Wrong. It's about 30 minutes until closing when I get a call to the front where the kids get picked up. I walk up there and see Entitled Dad standing there brooding in the lobby. Confused and bracing myself for more drama, I ask him how I can help him today. You do realize you're suspending a marine, son? Why don't you take better care of my kid? Maybe if you did, he wouldn't be making bad choices. Sir, I'm sorry that this happened, but we have a parent and code of conduct handbook that both you and your student signed acknowledging the rules. The conversation continued and as it continued, he got more and more mad. He began yelling and my front desk attendant got nervous. Bless her heart and she immediately started texting the owner who had left for the day. I pulled the dad into the office because other parents were coming in. It was see-through so my attendant had visuals on me and him, and he got really close to my face. I'm a marine. You're not going to suspend my son, and he will be here tomorrow. Thank you for your service. I can't imagine the dedication to this country you have. However, that doesn't change the outcome of what happens today. I'm going to kick your freaking butt. I'm tired of you acting like a smug little crap because my son doesn't follow the rules. At this point, Entitled Dad is all up in my face. I laugh when I'm uncomfortable, so I was chuckling a lot. But other than that, I think I held myself pretty well. But homie was jacked. The more he screamed, the harder it was for me not to laugh. So he continues to scream and finally I just look at him and said I was about to call the police and that he can either leave right now or can leave in handcuffs. He gave me a whole rant about how he's a marine and millennials are bullcrap people who don't care about veterans, even though my whole family is vets. And then my boss walked in and took over. 
I left the room and had to sit down in the office for a bit. I held myself composed out there, but I didn't realize how shaken up I was until after this dude was not my issue anymore. My attendant told me that I was brave and that she was really impressed. I felt like a punk. Long story short, kid was suspended and he still would act up after that day. Parents literally started telling him that they didn't care if he didn't listen in daycare, so long as he listened in school. Apparently by the stories he'd tell, he didn't do that either. He would tell me he didn't like me, but it got to the point where I just counted down the days before he was too old to be in the program anymore. His sister was an angel, so I knew when he left it wouldn't be an issue anymore. Don't work daycare, ladies and gentlemen. I have plenty of these. Maybe this should be a subreddit r slash entitled marines. Why is it that those who've served the least are the most vocal and entitled about it? And those who serve the most are the most humble, and sometimes they don't even talk about it. There's people I've met who served and I had no idea. It sounds like this marine wasn't really doing it in service to his country. It sounds like he was doing it more in service to himself. Hello lovely people, I have a story for you to enjoy. I used to be a pizza delivery driver for, let's call them, Father Jonathan's. I did this for nearly an entire year, oh boy were there some fun people you run into. Like the guy who offered me weed, that was fun. Now the subject of our story today is a very, very entitled mother who has a very interesting claim to the random pizza girl. Shall we begin? In the story is the entitled mother, SL, because school secretary makes it weird with the two S's, so we have school lady, me, and M manager. Not really there are the poor kids that have this woman as a mother. The story. So it's Valentine's Day, and we have a special on a heart-shaped pizza. I get an order for a school nearby. Cool, right? Except it's not. The total was zero dollars, meaning that it's a remake. But I'd been there since opening and hadn't seen that order come through before. So I asked my manager who was working that day. Oh yeah, it's for some lady who said it was never delivered. I just shrug and go about my day. Make the pizza, cut the brownie, cut the other pizza, bag it up, clock it out, put it in my car and leave. Knowing full well I'm not going to get a single tip on this one, but at least it's close and I can wash my hands of the situation. I get to the school and park. I hated to deliver there because the office was up a huge flight of stairs and carrying a huge pizza bag was not fun. I get up to the desk and give the name on the receipt to the school lady. It's for a student. Great. So I'm going to have to wait for this kid. But here is where it gets good. I think that's a student here. Oh, okay, I can wait. She does a typey thingy on the computer and her face gets confused. Actually, that's not a student. Can you call the number? So I go ahead and call the number. Here is where our woman of the hour enters. Hello? Yes, ma'am. This is your father, Jonathan's pizza delivery driver. I'm just calling to make sure I have the address right. Well, you're at this school, right? Yes, ma'am. Well, quit wasting my time. Just give it to my son. He should be at the school. SL starts to shake her head. No. No, the students aren't allowed deliveries from outside the school. She can't do that. Me to the EM. I'm sorry, ma'am, but the school is saying I'm not able to make the delivery because they don't allow outside deliveries. Well, how else am I supposed to feed my triplets? This is at a high school. I'm so sorry, ma'am, but... So what? You're just gonna let my baby starve? Ma'am, I'm so sorry, but I have to follow school policy. You know you guys did this yesterday too, and they went without lunch then too. It's your fault if they don't eat again today. Me and the school lady are just kind of shocked. My fault her triplets aren't being fed? I'm sorry ma'am, but I can't go against the school's policy. No, it's your fault. My babies are going to starve for the second day in a row because you idiots can't just deliver a pizza to them. I apologize ma'am, but you are just going to have to call the store and speak to my manager. This is out of my hands. EM hangs up and the poor desk lady just shakes her head. She did that yesterday too. And even if we didn't have the rule, the boys left with their friends. The friends had spotted them lunch even before the pizza got there. So I just took the pizzas back to the store. I had to look at the receipt to see how much she had originally paid for two pizzas and a brownie. She paid 42. 42 dollars for two pizzas and a brownie. Lady, go to Walmart and get stuff for PB&J for like under 10 dollars. 
My fault her probably really nice kids didn't eat that day? Okay, Karen. My manager only laughed and rolled her eyes. She said we could eat the pizza if she never came to get them. Well, I enjoyed every slice of it. So, somewhere out there, there are three teen boys that I starved because I couldn't deliver a pizza. Sorry guys. Don't most schools have some sort of cafeteria? Why not just give the kids like 10 bucks? I mean, you're gonna spend $42 anyway. And I'm sure there's plenty of food they could have bought at school. If you had the same problem yesterday, why would you think it would be any different the next day? And why wouldn't you have that night have gotten some sort of food, any food whatsoever, from a grocery and then sent them with something the next day? And if you really don't have the time, just order the groceries online, have it delivered or pick it up. It's almost like because it didn't happen the first day, she was so determined the next day, like, well, I gotta get that pizza that I paid for. I don't know what she was thinking. My dad and his siblings are the definition of entitled parents. They don't seem to be that way on the outside, but their actions scream narcissistic jerks. For example, my aunts don't speak right now because of a dress. Trust that I have so many more stories, but this story is about my father. My actions come from years of a rocky relationship and several times of him promising to change. This takes place about a month ago and I'm still fuming about it. Twice now I've had a mental break that causes me to act drunk and childlike. Doctors don't know the cause and we're trying to work it out. Anyways, I started to act strange earlier in the day and everyone decided it was best for me to go to the hospital to figure out if something was wrong. My dad had to take me there since my mum was busy. My boyfriend also tagged along because I insisted he did. After arriving and being placed in a room, my dad starts to make fun of this woman with a broken ankle in a couple of rooms over. I try to express my distaste for this, but I was having trouble communicating and no one knew what I was trying to say. Granted, she was being loud and I had this splitting migraine, yet there was no reason to comment on her personal details that were being told to the staff. The hospital ran a bunch of tests. Nothing came back as suspicious. Instead, they resorted to offering to have me speak with a psychologist since it must be the stress from the job I have recently started. I was heartbroken because the much more sane part of my mind knew this wasn't the case. I started crying and trying to convince everyone else that it wasn't stress. I refused to go when I was discharged. My boyfriend started to plead with me to leave. My dad came back with the discharge papers and instantly became enraged when he saw I wasn't ready to walk out. It's worth noting that my dad saw me being completely attached to my boyfriend this entire time, which stemmed from my boyfriend taking care of me the whole time. Dad was clearly tired, it was 1am at that point, and working through some sort of weird jealousy thing. This wasn't the end of it though. My boyfriend eventually convinced me to go, and we made it down to the entrance and waited at the entrance. My dad was still worked up and I refused to get in the car until he calmed down. He started yelling about how he was going to have to rethink our entire relationship because I was just such a horrible daughter that night. I was crying and my boyfriend had to place himself in between us multiple times. My mum was trying to intervene from home and my boyfriend's mum, bless her, was about to come and get us from home. After about 30 minutes of heck, I decided to get in the car. My dad screams the entire way back to my boyfriend's and then to our house and started rolling us into the middle of the intersections when lights weren't changing by fast enough. I was so distraught at that point from a traumatic night that I curl into bed and endured another 45 minutes of yelling from him that I'm the worst daughter, threats to take away my family doggo and now he'll never get any sleep. He has to be up at 6 for work. The next day I took off from work and moved in with my grandparents a few minutes down the road. My dad initiated a conversation, which he apologised, saying he was just tired and wasn't receiving a satisfactory attention from me. He then proceeded to tell me to say I'm sorry. I told him that I wasn't sane and he can't possibly hold me accountable for my actions and I didn't really engage with him after he was upset, which was a miracle that I did. He just shrugged it off and said, I guess that's where we stand now. A month later, he calls and texts often about how he misses the fact that I was the only one who hung out with him at home. If you're going to hold me accountable for what I say when I was crazy, then I'm going to do the same when you are angry. I've never heard of that medical condition before, but imagine how frustrating it would be to be in a hospital and you're going through something which you're not really in control of, 
and instead of your family being compassionate and supportive, they're just upset at you. It sounds like she has a supportive boyfriend, so at least there's some people in her life who she can depend on. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.